Ve is an associate professor at the American University in Cairo, uh, where she has uh, developed a new graphic design program. Uh, she's also a creative uh, director with MI7 Cairo. As an artist, she has exhibited work worldwide. She is a 2012 TED Global Fellow and was selected by BBC in 2013 as one of the 100 women impacting the world today. So really impressive and we're really actually honored to have Bahia with us. As I said, she's gonna join us in a couple of minutes. Uh, just uh, the usual reminders, if you need a headset for both Arabic or English, we have them available. Please make sure as you leave, uh, at the end of the day, you give them back, because we, we're missing one from yesterday, so hopefully it will be only one. And he's selling them? Okay, Kareem Jabari, if you were here yesterday, he was with us here, he had a presentation. Uh, you know, the calligraphy, the, the guy who did with his friends all the wall thing. Uh, he sells his t-shirts with his own designs in the shop that we have outside. You can have a look at it in the break. This is Bahia, so let's welcome her. Um, I work on the street in Cairo for now, and I wanted to share my story with you today but somebody has put my presentation on auto flip. So, um, I was invited um, th three years ago now, in 2010, to participate in, a, in, in an exhibition commemorating 100 years of Islamic art in Europe. Uh, the curator had only one condition. I had to use the Arabic script for my artwork. So, as an artist living in the world in 2010, I only had one thing to say. I wanted to say no. And in Arabic, to say no, we say no, and a thousand times no. So I started collecting, looking for this no on everything ever produced under Islamic or Arab patronage in the past 1,400 years from Spain to the borders of China. And I collected my findings in a book, placing them chronologically stating the name, the medium, the patron, and the date. Uh, I've put the book next to the installation, which stood uh, three by seven meters in Munich, Germany. And uh, um, two months later, the revolution started in Cairo. And um, for nine months, I talked, I lectured, I uh, created an exhibition even about the revolution. But this image, uh, made me go down to the street and start spraying. So the first message was no to, no to military rule. And, the, and I started spraying that across the street in Cairo. Uh, the second message was no to emergency law, no to military trials, no to a new pharaoh, no to stealing the revolution, no to blinding heroes, no to bullets, no to tear gas, no to sectarian division, no to violence, no to killing men of religion, no to burning books, no to stripping the people, long live a peaceful revolution, no to barrier walls. Um, but at some point I felt that this campaign was not enough and that uh, the no is not enough. It's not saying everything I want to say. So I created another campaign and I went with it on the street. It's called Some People. And it reads, some people have lost their eyes so you can see. Some people have been stripped naked so you can live decently. Some people have been killed so you can live. Some people have been imprisoned so you can live freely. And, so, uh, um, and some people have had their head put to the ground so you can raise your head up high. And the campaign went viral. Um, somebody took it, and eventually the message surpassed the medium, and it made it into the newspaper on the third page. Um, so, uh, but that was not enough. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted, <laughs> wait, I wanted to, 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 after, the after the elections, I wanted to pay a last tribute on the street. So I, I s s s decided to spray a campaign called Beware of Speed Bumps. So I, this is Tahrir, the star is Tahrir. And I started walking out of Tahrir because for me the revolution has 
uh, we, we should be out of Tahrir right now. So I walked, I took the bridge, and I was looking for a speed bump. The X marks the speed bump that I found. And I wrote, beware of speed bumps on the, the, the floor. And I highlighted the speed bump. But what I wrote after the speed, speed bump is long live the revolution in a, in a hope to um, keep the revolution alive. So after, after uh, uh, Mursi uh, was elected, Yes, please. <laughs> so, so and after after four after uh, um, four months of uh, Mursi in, in rule, and uh, after the November declarations of uh, dictatorship that were that were instilled by him, uh, I decided uh, to to go back to the street and uh, paint another message, um, and. I thought I'd be a good girl for four months, but that, that was how long I lasted. Uh, so the, the, after the speed bump campaign, I went back to Tahrir and I painted this on the 7th of December. It says, we're back, no to Mursi, no to a new pharaoh. So uh, all of this time, I'm trying to think, why do I keep going down to the street? What's, what's on the street? I don't need to be on the street. There are other channels. So why am I going down and spraying? And I want to share with you today the reasons. Um, I, have, I looked at my newsfeed and I analyzed seven insights. Um, and I will share them with you today of why people keep going down to the street. What kind of news are we consuming that, uh, for, that is forcing us to go down to the street? So the first one is overcoming the barrier of fear. And if you look at the image on top, you can see the photographers are standing in the background because they're afraid. Um, they have to transmit the image. And you have the people in the front hurling stones. And then you have three guys sitting reading a newspaper leisurely. And I think I read a beautiful quote uh, that the people who are fighting for peace should be as organized as the people who are fighting for war. And this is what's happening with the internet, is that we are trying, we are starting to organize. We are starting to find each other and finding the way. So how do you show the other that you broke the barrier of fear? So we also discovered techniques of how to do it. So the first image uh, reads down with Mubarak, and the second one reads down with Mursi on a tank by uh, somebody who did it quickly. So um, activists also go to other extremes. They jump out of a plane or dive underwater to, to get their message across. So the, the one on top, he's uh, telling the presidential candidate uh, who lost, uh, you can fly, you lost. And the other, the other two, uh, one, is, uh, one reads, leave before we run out of uh, air. This was for Mubarak. And the other one, no, for your constitution, the fish have said their word. And this was for Morsi. But, uh, activists also climb to mountaintops, like Omar Samra, he went to uh, Alaska to get his message across, to call for the people to uh, rebel. Um, not only humor, but they are using real strong visuals on the street, uh, carrying their shroud and walking in demonstration, um, an act uh, by young men and women, an act that was mimicked by a TV presenter who went on t national TV carrying her shroud saying, um, I'm Mr. President, I'm willing to die for my beliefs, you, and this is my shroud. Um, the citizen reporter is the second idea. So when they tell you, um, the police is not shooting anyone. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood did not beat anyone on the street. We have images to prove otherwise. We don't trust the media, but we trust, we trust each other. No matter how big a news agency is, no matter how many uh, people they can deploy on the ground to cover a story, the citizen reporter is everywhere with a camera ready to take a photograph and upload it and share it with the world. So we are an army of citizen reporters. Um, activists go to the extreme of sharing uh, their medical reports uh, online uh, and showing, to show them to the world, to show the people that this is what's happening to me. The third idea is learning from the past and cr critical citizenship. Th there's a, a, a state of mass education that is taking place online. And this image was circula circulated in the first round of writing of, of the Constitution. And um, the person who circulated this image clearly pointed to the fact that um, the people, these people who were writing the constitution uh, looked after the minorities because there was a child and a Jew on the committee. Uh, but please note, no women. <laughs> uh, 
still, uh, whenever we need to teach each other something, somebody takes an old newspaper clipping and shares it online, as if we're constantly telling each other, please learn from history. I'm very lucky to have a dear friend who's on the committee uh, of the 50 people who are writing the Constitution, and he shares on his newsfeed every day what they talked about, what were the decisions, and what, were, what are they eating. So I'm, I am quite optimistic about this round of uh, rewriting of the Constitution. So the other idea is learning from the other and new leadership with the internet. We're, we're all looking around and we know what's going on in the world. So what, what, are, what are the ideas that strike us? What are the ideas that we look up to? So one, one of the memes that was shared is the difference between Egypt and Finland. We had a 79-year-old or 79-year-old prime minister versus the 40-year-old handsome fin Finnish uh, prime minister. <laughs> And then we were sharing uh, uh, the concept of the poorest president in the world, or the youngest uh, parliament member uh, from Uganda, who's a 20-year-old woman, or Mahathir Mohamed, who says uh, from from Malaysia, who says, "When I want to pray, I look towards Mecca, but when I want to improve education, I look towards Japan," or uh, a pregnant uh, minister of war in Spain being saluted by a general. These are all examples we look up to, but. That does not mean we look at the other and we want to be the other. We look at the other uh, as an example because we, when, when the first round of rewriting the Constitution, this was going around, it says um, these people on top who are uh, award winners, uh, uh, leaders in Egyptian society uh, intellectually on, and on many levels are not writing the Constitutions and uh, the, the ones in the lower tier are the ones who are writing it. That's why we are rewriting it now. So <laughs> it's... Um, but not, so we are seeking uh, other, um, we're looking at the other, but we also look uh, in, internally, we're trying to look for leaders within us. Um, uh, for me as an artist, what is, inspires me the most are um, uh, these young um, street um, uh, people demonstrating in Chile who draw paintings on their body or a kissing, uh, kissing protest or uh, these, um, um, Labour Party um, demonstration in front of the Italian Parliament where they placed the, the um, it's a beautiful installation, or a flash mob flamenco in a bank in Spain where they go in and dance and sing and say, you capitalist pigs. It's brilliant. I think you just look it up. We don't have time. Just look for it. So is this in my mind? Is it all online? And is, is this only in our head? And I want to talk to you about the, uh, another idea, which is the cyber street dialogue. And, and how are we...